I'm Xiangren. Um, I'm graduating PhD at UIUC and a visiting scholar at Stanford and we joined in USC Computer Science Department as a faculty um, early next year. Um, so I will be talking about recommendation in a sort of a very special but um, highly demanding setting that we have lots of tax tax data. Um, and why we're so interested in this is because um, tax is the way that people put their needs and put their thoughts um, in and it's very useful resource for model the users as well as characterizing those items. And here's the outline of the talk. So I will be first overview um, the very traditional tax based recommendation system, which is content based recommendation. And I will talk about uh, something new, which we call tax switch information network, where we try to um, put the different kinds of tax elements into the information network framework and then conduct recommended systems on top of that. And we are further digging into see whether we can mine networks from tax and we use our network based representation techniques on those text based network and see what's happening and we do a little bit summary over that. So uh, let's start. Um, as I said, text is so rich and it's about users, it's about items. For example, users um, put on text descriptions to talk about their interests. And so it's useful to sort of you make use of this text to uh, model the user profile. And also you see lots of reviews about products, lots of descriptions along with those um, um, items. Like um, in some particular case, you see the items actually are just fully cons consists of text, like news article or scientific papers. Um, and to just give you two more um, concrete examples, you, when you want to um, read papers or read articles, you see these recommender, recommender uh, systems on the related articles. Basically, you are based on your past reading experiments, based on your section histories, um, based on your clicking um, on the other articles, the system is trying to give you a set of uh, articles that seems to be most relevant to your interests and seems to be um, um, most likely you would be reading in the next couple moments. Um, so that's one scenario. And movie recommendation is talking about um, you have long descriptions and reviews about those movies. So then you are not only just based on what people have watched, but also based on whether the movie's text texture description is also aligned well with the user profile. But there's lots of challenges. First one is it's at the core is about the text itself. So that we know the text is unstructured, which means it's not like a database table. It's not a spreadsheet that you can easily um, uh, come put map them into a feature table and then you can apply a bunch of machine learning algorithms. So it's just a sequence of characters. And um, and that's the best case. It's just a sequence of clean characters. But in many cases, think about tweets, think about reviews. It's a it's a bunch of, it's a sequence of uh, irregular um, text sequence. Maybe it even consists of different languages. Um, so the first question we ask is, what is the basic units which we should use to analyze this text? Like what's the semantic units? People will say, okay, I'm using word as a bag of words. But then some people say, okay, and granted making more sense. But the next is they will be saying, okay, I should use phrase or should use entities. So there's different possibility here. And then once you define what is the basic um, semantic units, the next question is there's data sparsity. Um, that's because Language is just so highly very um, variable. People um, using a wide variety of ways and talking about the same thing. Um, one strings could have different meaning. Different strings could have one meaning, and so on. Um, and it would just be very different across different domains or text genres or languages. And next is, uh, what is the right way to weight these text elements? What is the right weighting methods? Is TFI, they have the best way, is BN25 the best way, and, and so on and so forth. Th those are all um, questions, open questions that we need to ask when we um, put, it, put ourselves into such a context. And the second one is, we have existing structures. These um, user item interactions, for example, these social networks and um, many other structures, they are, by nature, is structured data. And text, by nature, is unstructured data. How do you put these two things together? What is the what is the unified structure? What is the unified form of representation you want to use? And we'll, our answer 
right now is we want to use information network as, as the uh, the form of the representation to line up these two things and we will talk about that a little bit more. Um, so overall, using texture information, there could be three kinds of approach. First one is we just go back to the traditional way we use features. Uh, everything is put into features is flagged and we, we do tons of different things on the feature vectors. Second one is like Yijo talked about, everything is networks. So we map everything into networks and we do a bunch of, bunch of network science and graph mining and network analysis. And the third one, so if we go with the second one, then the question comes where you got this network on text. So then there's text to network approach that we try to transform everything into network. And we call that in the morning, we, we actually I have a tutorial on mining entity relation and attribute structures from massive text data. And that entire tutorial with Jiawei Wei um, Han from UIUC, we're talking about how to turn text into networks. Um, so this is just taking one piece of work to sort of uh, give you an idea on how to turn text into network. Okay, so I'm gonna first overview what is content-based recommendation system, which has been there for a dec a decades. So collaborative filtering is to recommend things uh, based on what your similar peers or folks also um, like or also have purchased or have um, viewed before. So it look at your past history and the user, other users' past history and match you with other user and recommend things that they purchase, but you haven't purchased. And the content-based filtering is a totally different diagram that you purchase, uh, let's say, item A, and system tell you that item B is similar to item A, so I recommend, recommend you item B. Um, so I look at how similar item A and B are. Um, that's the basic idea. And um, to just put a little bit more details here, it, mean, it means that the system need to understand first what is the user. So basically you need to transform user into a profile. Uh, 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 in, in one example is into a feature vector, for example, if you're taking the feature uh, based approach. And then you need to transform item into a feature vector if you want to just go with the feature based approach and then you need to match these two vectors, which is matching the user profile with content profile. And you can have a score that describing their similarity. Uh, this is pretty good approach if you're looking at this advantage. First one is it doesn't need to care about any other users. So as long as I can derive a profile for myself and I can derive profile for all the items, I don't need to care about anyone else. So I don't need to look at history of other users. So it's, uh, this is a diff uh, di make a distinction with other collaborative filtering based approach. Second, it's transparent because you know um, what is my key features and what is the item's key feature, and you know what are the features that make us similar, so you can use those features to explain why you want to recommend item to your um, to this user. Um, and the third one is there's no cold start problem as long as you have those profile, so you don't need to care about whether um, this user haven't purchased anything else. But you, if you have his profile, but there's a dilemma here whether you get profile first or get a history first. Um, and that's not the focus of this slide. But there's also lots of disadvantage if you're going through this content-based recommendation. First one is um, if the profile is low quality, then the recommendation results are low quality. And that's very, that's obvious. So same thing for if the user is profile is low quality, then you, you just gotta be garbage in and garbage out. Um, and the no surprise is basically saying, um, you are using a pretty fine, finite set of fixed, fixed set of the features and anything is measured based on these features. So when you want, when you want to, uh, when, 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 when the underlying mechanism saying, okay, there's actually a couple magical features is making things happen, but it's not in your set, then you cannot make surprise things happen to the user. Um, and the major components consist of a content analyzer, which take items and transform into features. And the profile learner is take users transform into a user profile or user feature vector. And then a filtering component is to compare these two things and give you a, a similarity score. And, and now um, the details comes. So how do people represent those entities or I, uh, those items? Um, so if you, if you deal with structure um, 
things, then everything can be sort of represented as a spreadsheet like this. You have item one zero zero one, and uh, you have its name, which is string. You have a uh, maybe his uh, uh, maybe the, the the type of cuisine this this food is, and the, the service and the cost and so on. So. Basically, you are you have pretty um, restricted assumption here. You saying I'm only interested in a bunch of um, a finite set of attributes, and these attributes taking mostly most likely categorical values, uh, a small set of uh, attribute values, and um, so then you can easily construct a feature vector um, based on these tables. But now the question comes: What if you are there's many most of the um, information about these items actually exists in, in the form of free text or unstructured text data. Then there's no attribute um, given. There's uh, no categorical value for associated with that, these attributes. And there's lots of uh, complexity come from this nature language um, processing. Like this same word will have different meanings, but different words will have the same meanings. And how do you deal with this? Um, just a very simple example here is people uh, are too lazy, so they take TF-IDF weighting as the, as the approach. So TF-IDF weighting basically first assume I break everything into a bag of words. That's the first assumption they take. Second is they think TF, ID, TF and IDF will be two key factors in measuring the importance of the, of the term regarding the item. So they basically assuming um, if the term weight is high, if the document weight is low, then this term is more central to the topic of the document and so on. Um, lots of limitation for sure. Like the um, it, its bag of words is already losing those angular or phrase semantics. It may not be the right semantic unit you should use, and uh, so then there's a bunch of work working on using information extraction to f make uh, entities names out of the text uh, and the relationship between the entities, which is covered more in our uh, morning's tutorial, and in the. And that's about how to represent those items. What about representing users using a profile to sort of profiling those users? So what you need is for uh, those approach mostly likely is taking two things. One is the user's history, like the passing history in interacting with those items. So if we purchase a couple of items, so I, one thing I can do is I can aggregate the, the items profile together to represent the user, um, to use as the user's profile. And you can do weighted aggregation or any other kinds of aggregation. So essentially, you are defining a function f here, which takes the user's past history, and you also take the item's profile, and you can do whatever transformation to get the user profile from here. And um, there's lots of things you can do, uh, but most most existing work, they take a pretty um, manual process, which means they ask a user to um, sort of um, give their interest to um, use using such a user interface, like clicking on their interest when they first land on the website or the service. And this interest will be used to construct a user initial profile. Of course, later on, when the user have more interaction history, we can refine his profile or her profile. And um, and based on this, there's also some follow-up work trying to use different um, classifiers to um, sort of um, represent the user's um, 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 interests, like using a decision tree or naive Bayes methods. Um, so that's the basic idea of the content-based recommendation. We, uh, we, we basically uh, um, are focusing on doing two things. One is to representing user and items. The second one is to uh, figure out what would be the right model to, to sort of measure the similarity between the user and items. Now, um, as we see, the content-based recommender, recommender systems is taking most likely a feature-based approach. Uh, basically, they transform everything um, in this in this um, problem setting into a flat feature vector or feature representation, uh, let it be user or item, and then they can derive model on top of that. So there, there's some existing work on using word, using topics, using concepts from knowledge bases, like the uh, explicit semantic analysis, or using key phrases. Um, but now we are thinking, um, why 
don't we use information network as the um the you the phone of the model to unify everything so then you can put document together with the concepts in the documents the entities in the documents and many other things to give you more, uh, more concrete examples um for example, if you're doing um, tweets or article recommend, rec recommendations, you can put tweets together with hashtag, with the user of the tweets, and with anything mentioned in the tweets, including the organization's person names, locations, and so on. So you can uh, basically have a much richer representation, consists of both the structure part of the tweets, like the social network part, uh, the meta information part, plus, um, the semantic meanings of the tweets, like what people really talking about in the tweets. Same thing happened for the point of interest recommendation. You, you not only have those reviews and the business associated with those reviews, but you also have lots of things uh, in the reviews, even sentiment terms or aspect terms could be part of the, the network. So the, the great thing about this representation we think is, for, first, it unifies both structure and structure think. Of course, we, 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 we will talk about how to make the unstructured part uh, to transform into structure. Um, that will be talked about in the next part. Um, but the, another benefit of this is it carry richer semantics. Uh, and technically speaking, the most attractive uh, properties we can make collective inference on this network. The collective inference over both the structure part and the text part, which it's, uh, it's hard to be done because let's say you have a social network and you have a, a meta information about the tweets and you also have the tweets tags. If, if you're using feature representation, how do you map the, the, the structure part into a feature vector? Maybe you can take meta, path, and ma many other things. That, that also is a possible way uh, to do collective inference. But taking the network approach, we think this heterogeneous information network is a very nice form to do a collective inference. And I want to just talk a little bit more on a specific task to showcase on how we can do recommender uh, we, can, we can do recommend recommendation over this text rich information network. So we use citation recommendation as an example here. The so citation recommendation base saying, uh, I want to get rid of the keyword base um, search process that I type in a bunch of keywords and I want to find relevant paper. Uh, but you can see this, this interface where you, you can use in either Google Scholar or Semantic Scholar, they uh, return you with results that not really relevant to your um, like, like information need. For example, if I search citation recommendation clustering, so um, what I'm thinking is I want to see whether there's a citation recommendation model that leverage clustering. But then the results, the top three results returns are either about just recommendation or just citation recommendation or uh, something about clustering. So this is the, the, the problem of the keyword based things. And in fact, we want papers, we, we, we have so many, uh, we have mass amount of literatures and there's, there's no way we can finish, digest them. So we want to find a way that we can automate a process that a system can return some relevant and also important papers about uh, our previous, previous work so that we can understand the context, the background of the problem we're gonna study. Um, and the traditional system is a keyword base. And the query with a few keywords is hard to capture uh, more, uh, very complex user intent. So the, here we propose this citation recommendation uh, setup is first we can build up a text rich information network um, um, from the deep, from a, a, a bibliography data set, for example, DBLP data, database, where you have papers, you have the author of the paper, venue of the paper, which are the meta information, already, they are originally structured, but you also can take many um, key phrases, keywords out of the paper. So you have clustering belongs to this paper, data mining belongs to the other paper, and so on. And now you are given the system a manuscript. The manuscript basically consists of maybe a, uh, um, uh, couple sentences, maybe just your abstract of the paper. And you also know who is writing the paper, that's the author, and where are you gonna submit it to, that's the target venue. Um, and phrases is basically coming from the, the couple sentences that you already written. So I take this as a query into our system, and also I take the entire, the gigantic Bivolver network as the background information. I want to output a ranked list of papers that are 
most likely to should be cited or should I should use to I should reference them just rank by a, a confidence score here um, so first we can simply define a model that is what we call global model which means we assume every paper follow the same pattern in citing other paper follow the same um, principle in citing other paper the principle here is basically say okay I will cite paper with um, with high, pr um, high authority that's the topical prior let's say if you're dealing with topic modeling then LDA paper will be high authority but if you're dealing with frequent pattern mining then you probably don't think LDA is a very authority paper and you also want to cite paper that match your content so there's a variety of way of thinking what is the match like keyword match using BN25 and so on and also you want to uh, cite paper that topically is, is matching so these are the three assumptions that we put together to build a global model and just give a little bit more details the global model if you look, looking like this like you have you given a query you can see uh, you want to output how likely I want to cite publication A let's say and it use the Bayesian rule basically say okay the likelihood is basically the how likely this publication should be signed which is the authority of the publication multiply um, how much the publication and the query paper is so this is a language model that consists of both the content component and the topic component so it take care of take care of uh, both the topic match and the content match um, the the but this seems not a perfect model that we should be um, just satisfied with because um, all the papers seems to be adopting the same criterion um, in citing other papers so let's say 50 I, I take 0.5 on topic authority I take 0.2 on topic match I take 0.3 on content match every paper seems to be followed the same way that's the assumption of the global model but maybe I'm writing a paper I only cite high authority paper I'm, I'm maybe I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm like a problematic behavior but some people only cite um, paper that seems to be perfectly matched um, but they don't care about any authority organizations of people so I mean obviously there, there should be a, a, a flexibility here to let different paper or different groups of paper to have a different citation behavioral pattern and that's the uh, motivation for the next work which we're trying to f go from global model to what we call paper specific model where each paper has its own behavioral pattern inside the other paper and making an assumption that every paper is different seems to be too um, too um, restrict um, or too flexible in the sense that it will cause a huge parameter space so we just go back a little bit we say a paper may be um, forming a couple different behavioral groups like for me I cite high authority paper so there's other people also same as me so we found a little big group and there's a, another bunch of people found a group that decide paper that only looks similar to um, to your content but they don't care about authority so we let's say we can derive such latent user interest or citation interest groups and each groups will have its own um, behavioral pattern which it's mod it's 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 real it's implemented as the separate models in our framework just give you an example here let's say I'm looking for um, so I have a query manuscript it's talking about um, it's it, the paper is doing citation recommendation um, for academic papers so um, the interest group could be at least two of these like one is interested in finding citation recommendation pa paper those papers that tr um, solve this problem solve the citation recommendation problem and there's maybe a bunch of interest group is looking at link prediction techniques which is very useful in solving the citation recommendation papers and these two groups will have quite different patterns inside in, in finding other papers to cite for example if you are looking at the papers that solving citation recommendation as the problem they will look for um, authors like Lee Giles which has lots of work on citation recommendation and they will be looking at keywords like literature search which is sort of very relevant with the problem of citation recommendation so they go this route to find papers that are relevant but if you're looking 
at the other group's behavior, they go the other several paths. Like they solve, they try to use, they try to study link prediction techniques. So they look for John Klemberg's papers because he's an expert in designing those link prediction algorithms. And they use keywords link prediction to find other papers, or they look at KDD values to see whether there's papers um, solving link uh, using link prediction as the techniques. So you can see there's different pattern, but then how we can uh, make our computational system to derive these latent interest groups. That's the first question. And second, how do you know the pattern of each, um, the behavioral pattern of each groups? So we also start with this um, basic setup, like we transform the bibliography data sets as a, a, a heterogeneous network where you have the um, phrases as the node, and you also have the values, authors as the nodes, the paper as the nodes, all interconnected together. And uh, this is our high level idea. So we think, um, so the citations of the paper, like let's say I cite 10 papers, the citation um, of these 10 citations could be softly classed into a couple interest group. Maybe five of them, maybe four of my 10, four out of my 10 citations is going that route, that interesting group route, and the remaining one going the other route. And um, each of these groups will have their own pattern in finding relevant papers and in finding high authority papers. So um, I'm gonna design a, a sort of group specific or paper specific models that looking at um, how authority the other papers are and how relevant the paper other papers are, but they have different weights on these different, these different factors. So just uh, um, give you a give an idea here. Okay. So here's the final score function as uh, which is between the query and the and the target paper. So the Q is the query manuscript. The P is the target paper we we are we are comparing on. So it the score can be break down into um, K parts, where the Q, uh, the sorry the theta K here is meaning the soft group membership, like how likely this um, this query manuscripts is belonging to um, group group K let's say it's 0 0.5, then group K has a citation behavioral pattern looking like this part. So it's basically consists of a relevance and the authority. So the, basically we, we are looking at what's the group K's view of the authority of the paper K, P, and what's the group K's um, a view of the relevance between the Q and P. So different groups, different K will have different um, concrete function R and, uh, and the function F here. So further breakdown, so as I said, this is the relevance part, this is the authority part. And uh, the and also there's a little bit check here, how do you learn this theta? So the theta need to be learned for every paper, that's uh, too, much, too many parameters. So we sort of assume that this theta can be um, derived from the paper attributes theta. So you, you are not learning the number of papers theta, but you are learning the number of attribute theta. So the attribute could be the number of uh, the values and the authors. So basically we, we, we make the check so that we can only focus on uh, total number of authors plus total number of values, this number of theta, but uh, instead of the total number of papers theta to, um, to, to solve the problem. And now I want to show you how we define the paper relevance. So the paper relevance is break down into a weighted combine of the meta path based similarity. So as Ijo introduced, we can define a bunch of meta paths um, which can capture uh, different ways of measuring the relevance between two papers. It could be measured based on the number of share keywords, can measure be based on whether they're sharing authors or, or whether they are published in the same venue and many more other things. So it's predefined here and you are learning the weights over this different meta path. And together they define the relevance between paper Q and paper P. So that's the relevance part. The authority part is learned it by doing label propagation on the graph that we constructed. So it's propagating between the venue author paper and the keywords. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, the, the, the interesting thing is um, because different groups, they have a different weights on, on, on those um, nodes. So the uh, authority scores 
for different groups will end up to be different. So the LDA papers authority in this topical group or this interest group may be higher than the other in the, in uh, than the other um, um, cases where you see frequent pattern mining as the interest group and so on. So we just do a little bit case study and I will show that table uh, pretty soon that we really can find out a uh, very interesting um, group specific authority ranking like different groups they have different ranking over the values and authors. So basically we are solving an uh, optimization problem to um, learn the parameters that I show in those um, score functions. And this optimization function is doing two things. It's doing a label propagation on this graph and it's doing matrix factorizations to learn those score functions parameters. So they have been put in together in this John optimization problem. And uh, we do experiments on two kinds of publication, the B DBLP, which is CS papers and the PubMed, which is biomedical papers. Um, so the first thing I want to show is what I just mentioned. You can see this, I, I break, I, I show you two groups and these two groups, um, we don't know what they are. So this, this, um, I just given after we read the results, but the group one, seems to give in pretty high scores to those database conference, including VLDB and Sigma, and giving high authority scores to those um, also familiar names in the database community like Christos Ferrusos and Hector, um, Dan Trussi. Um, and the group two is seems to be focusing more on computer vision. They, they, they have very high authority on like journals like Parmi and uh, uh, Multimedia, and high scores on those um, authority uh, multimedia on, or computer vision researchers. So um, another thing we try to validate, we can derive some meaningful interest groups is shown here. So the group A and group B, so we look at how they cite different values. So we look at how the group A and group B are citing four different values. So the four different values are like Sigma, VLDB, Parmi, and uh, IJCV. And you find that group A is citing much more um, database conferences versus the computer vision conference. And for group B, it's just on the uh, um, um, reverse rate that they cited more computer vision conferences. So the chart on the right side is showing how they cite other authors. These authors are also from different community. And you can see these different groups also have different preference over those um, authors. So we also done a quantitative ex um, um, evaluation on seeing how our uh, models can recover the true citation references um, of those papers. So basically we, we, we mask out those citations and uh, let the model only know maybe 30% or 10% uh, of the citations that these manuscripts has. And we, let, we, we check whether they can perfectly recover the remaining 80% of the citation reference. That, and that's how we do these experiments. So we show you precision recall at K. And you can see um, compared to other methods, which we have both content-based methods and purely structure-based methods. So we have a, a significant improvement over there. So I think before going to the next, we should take a break um, and we can come back at 3.30. Thank you. So um, let, um, we are back on this text rich information network and the recommendation in those text rich information network. So we talk about um, this, we talk about a global model and a sort of a group specific or paper specific model that we can use to do this, this recommendation in text rich information network. And then now the problem comes what if you just got um, tags and uh, what are the ways that you can use those tags and to sort of construct the networks from the tags and uh, what would be the right way to construct the network? So um, for example, in the um, settings we just show, we show we can extract phrases from the tags and we can treat, treat these phrases as node and then we can wait these phrases for each document. The weighted um, weighting can be done by using TFIDF weighting. So basically you are building edges with the TFIDF as the weight on the edges. And that's a very simple way to sort of uh, measure the relationship strengths between a phrase and a document. But then uh, there's 
but but then there's lots of problems coming up with such kind of a uh, um, waiting schema. For example, I just want to show you here. Um, in many cases, you can find um, TFIDF is preferring those high IDF terms, but in some applications, we're gonna show you this I, this high IDF terms may not be the most informatic one in measuring um, the two items or the user and the items. So I'm gonna go back to here and continue with. Um, the first step is to construct this network from taxes. What are the nodes? What are the semantic units that we're going to using? And let's say we determine to use phrases. Okay, but then what would be the way? Uh, what would be the right way to um, sort of determine these edge weights using the data? So the this brings us to the problem of can we actually learn the weights of these edges from the data together with learning the uh, recommended recommendation models. Um, I mean the recommendation models that using these networks. So we want to put a, a put these questions into a specific uh, problem scenario that we want to recommend jobs for people in the LinkedIn. So this basically is saying we are given a LinkedIn members. We know the expertise of the member. We know some some of the users um, profile and also know some um, the jobs profile like the what's the required skill sets of the jobs um, and what is the um, description of the jobs and what are the location and title of the jobs and so on. So basically we want to look at these two, um, two sides and see whether we can align users with the jobs that best fits the user. And if we take in a very simple solution using the TFIDF weighting, that means we sort of uh, um, break down everything to a flat feature vector. So um, a job is representing with um, just a bunch of um, um, pairwise fields that you are measuring. Okay, member field S with uh, how like how similar is member field S with the job field F, uh, job field T, and you can compute a bunch of similarity scores based on this pair of uh, member field and job field, and then you can just fit a, into a, a very simple uh, linear regression model and get the similarity scores for this job and this. Um, um, this member. So just give you an example here. Um, you can basically um, com compute the similarity between the title with the skill, the user's title with the job skills. You can also compute the TFIDF based similarity between the user's skills with the job's titles or the user's skills with the job's skills. So you can do all, you can exhaust the other pair, pairs uh, between these two um, two sides and between all the fields of these two sides. And basically you are enumerating all these pairs and then can fit a linear regression model. And now we are questioning about whether TFIDF TF weighting is the best way to do. So let's say we observe on the data that some of the high IDF terms include like government. Um, but we also find out the low IDF terms will include very informative things like machine learning. And if you are matching the member's um, description with the job's description, you will find out that both of these texts will include government and will talk about machine learning. But of course, you will think in terms of job matching or job recommendation, machine learning seems to be more useful features to use to find out these two things are similar versus the government. So we really want to tweak this weighting of the edges by using the data itself not just using a um, predefined heuristics to sort of uh, weight all these terms. Now, um, so we set up a problem like this, which brings us to a um, heterogeneous information network in the job recommendation setup. So we link users with their um, the t words in their title. We link the users with the words in the skills and the words from the description, and we we um, also link the jobs to all set of the words that from different fields of the jobs. And then we can have a, such a network schema. Now we want to propose a two level models to sort of uh, make the, our intuitions happen. The first one is I want to learn the, the term weights. Like we want to learn how important this phrase or this um, unit grants um, to, um, in terms of the documents or the fields that we are focusing on. So we want to learn, okay, how important machine learning is for the job skills or the, for the job descriptions. And then we also want to learn the ways for combining 
a different pairs of the fields. For example, we want to learn the ways um, for the pairs, user skill versus job skills, or user titles versus job titles. So the first layer is taking, off, uh, taking care of how we um, weight different features. And the second layer is take care of how we combine different few pairs. So something look like this. This is the first layer. So every word or phrases is shown in the um, white color circle. Um, so you have term maybe from S1 to uh, SV, um, which means the users feel one to few, um, users feel um, one to few, um, sorry, users um, in this field as the word, the token S1 to token SV. And so then we assign the weight as this blue color circle here. So we want to learn the weight of this blue color circle. Same thing happened for the job field. For each of the tokens in the job field T, you have the token T1 to TV, and you are also learning the weights. So you combine them together, you get this similarity score as, uh, as um, similarity score between the S and T. But then you have a bunch of similarity scores for each pair of the fields now, you need to combine them. So now you have this layer that combining everything to the final score S, which is basically a weighted combination plus a offset here. Uh, so the whole structure, the architecture looking like this, it's a multi-layer regression model. You have the first layer learning the blue color weights for each words in every field, and you're combining two fields together into the yellow color board where you have the pairwise similarity between um, two fields and you're combining all the few pairs together into the final score as IJ, which is between the user I and the, the job J. And you know some of the ground truths um, by looking at the successful recommendation cases um, from, the, uh, from the system. So then you can use them to learn the yellow color latent variables and the blue color variables here. So what is happening here is we um, use the linking data, which consists of um, 75 fields um, for both users and jobs in total. And it consists of over uh, 400K unique terms that extracted by running um, just um, turn extraction algorithms. And we do have some ground truth data, which is 3.1 million member and job pairs that we know this members successfully land those jobs so they can be used as ground truths. Now we mask some of these ground truths. Um, so we sort of only leaving 50% of them here. And then we um, want to sort of make prediction on the remaining ones. It's pretty similar to the setup we, we, we do for the citation um, prediction thing. And first thing I want to show is we want to show you the, some term weights, um, which are um, that we learn. So we're showing you, we visualize the um, the terms that get high weights with uh, more appealing um, font size here. So you can see uh, for the top terms in the job skills, you will see SharePoint, accountant, uh, automation, productions, and so on, with some other things seems to be a little smaller, like the very log. I don't know whether people are still doing very log or data log. Uh, in um, security and uh, electronical. Um, what about member skills? So it seems like the machine learning is really hot here and uh, um, and talent is a skill. Um, that's interesting, like logistics here, control. Um, so we also visualize you um, the importance of those jobs, uh, the, the fields pairs between a member and the job. So you can see uh, the match between the user skill with the job skill seems to be the most appealing one. So it's with the uh, the boldest uh, uh, blue um, arrows here. And the second one seems to be the matching between the member's self summary with the job's description, which lies pretty well with our intuition. And we do a little bit quantitative study in terms of the AUC and AUPRC here. You can see that with this multi-layer uh, logistic regression model, it, it, it do a bit better job than those content-based recomm recommendation model, which using just TFI DFS feature. So this uh, is 17.2 17 improvement over the AUC basically show you that by learning the term ways and also learning the ways to combining these different few pairs, actually um, it's very helpful 
to bring this improvement. So now just right here, um, we, we know that tax information is everywhere in recommender systems. The challenge is though, how to make, uh, how to transform this unstructured information into sort of structures so that we can combine with the traditional pipeline in this recommender system. And the content-based recommendation system, um, recommender system is going towards the feature-based approach. They transform everything into flagged feature vectors. And, and, and for example, they can represent users with feature vectors, um, items with feature vectors, and they measure the vector similarity as the similarity between the user and item. But then we talk about why don't we transform, why don't we just um, extract some of these terms or, or entities from the documents, link them with the documents, so they sort of, sort of can integrate it with the uh, structure part, like the social network or the user item inf um, interactions. And then we can conduct, uh, we can apply network models to do this global, inf um, re um, uh, global recommendation model and also paper specific recommendation model. And then all those previous recommendation models are um, using pretty fine heuristic to determine the edge weights um, for those terms. So we question whether we can learn those weights from data and that bring us to a network, the first steps in the network construction from text that we know there's some links has been established between the terms and document, but whether we can um, adjust the weight in a better way you, by looking at the data. The next will be whether we can filter out some of the links, whether we can add in more links that make sense to the, the problem uh, or even making the difference between the node types. So you may know, okay, the entity, this is person entity that is organization entity, that's the location entity, and they should be playing different roles when we do a recommendation. So yeah, that would be the part of the recommendation in the test rich setting. Then now I will pass back to Ijo to talk about recommendation with spatial temporal information. You want to 